The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. If you've been missing smoking joy and really want some fast, try better tasting Lucky Strike for pleasure that will last. Yes, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. So many folks don't like their smokes and that is really sad For Lucky's mildness and rich taste would make them very glad Sure, because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette Friends, when we say Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette We mean just that Not just as good, but better For Lucky's always give you real mildness and rich true tobacco taste A perfect blending that fine tobacco and only fine tobacco can give you and LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. That's important because a recent 38 city survey shows that millions of smokers are not happy with their present brand. Now those smokers and any smoker who's the least bit discontented should switch to Lucky Strike. Yes, friends, for complete smoking enjoyment, be happy, go lucky, because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. I know he's home because his car is in the garage. Now, if you just follow me, we'll go in and pay Jack a visit. And you needn't ask me to leave because you're going to sit there and listen to what I've got to say. Uh oh better not go in. Seems to be some sort of a commotion going on. I haven't told you half what's on my mind. And believe me, I'm talking for everybody in this neighborhood. Why, when you first moved in, we thought you were a nice, gentle, kindly old man. <laughs> but before we knew it, you had the mortgages on all our houses. <laughs> oh, I don't blame you for not saying anything. All you can do is sit there with your mouth open. And why? <laughs> because even you know that that last trick you pulled was the cheapest, most abominable thing anybody ever did. Imagine! Putting a woman with seven children out on the sidewalk because she missed one payment. Rochester, turn off that radio. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you have just heard another episode in that thrilling story, The Mean Old Man. <laughs> in tomorrow's episode, you will hear the true... Thanks, Rochester. I don't know why you listen to that program, boss. It always upsets you. Well, I don't know where they get those fantastic ideas. I mean, nobody can be that cheap. Well. <laughs> and that corny title, The Mean Old Man. It's ridiculous. I'll give it. Mr. Benny's residence, star, stage, screen, radio, and the only laundry service that... Huh? Oh, 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 hello, Miss Livingston. I almost wasted a commercial on you. <laughs> yeah, I'll put him on. It's Miss Livingston, boss. Thanks. Hello, Mary. How do you feel? What? A hundred? Mary, that's awful. That... Oh, your temperature. I thought you meant the doctor, Bill. <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad you're feeling better. And Mary, what? Oh, you're welcome, Mary. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Now, I'll call you tomorrow, honey. Goodbye. What'd you thank you for, boss? Well, everybody's been sending her flowers and fruit and candy, so I just thought I'd be a little different. What did you send her? A bowl of chili. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's good in this nippy weather. <laughs> anyway, it looks like Miss Livingston will be back on the program next week. That's good. Uh, if you don't 
don't need me anymore now, boss. I'll go in the library and finish working on your scrapbook. Oh, fine, fine, Rochester. You know, one of my biggest thrills is when I show my scrapbook to people. I know, boss. That's why I put the picture of you shaking hands with the King of England right on the front cover. Good, good. What's on the back cover? An ad. You sold a space to Manchin with Man- Manischewitz's wife. <laughs> that hunch all day. I'm a man. Man. Well, Rochester, look at it. Face. (laughs) Face, I went over it with him a thousand times. Man of Shevitz says, man of Shevitz says, Rochester, Paste that picture of me playing the violin on the inside cover, would you? Oh, I can't. We've got that reserved for search in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You've got the only scrapbook that's been handled by Batten, Barson, Durston, and Osborne. <laughs> well, you go in the library and paste all my reviews in it. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll get it. Be my love. Da dee da dee da 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 da. Be my love. Dum 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 dee da da. Well, hello, Mr. Brown. Hello, Mr. Benny. I'm sorry I'm three days late with the rent on our house, but here it is. Oh, thank you. By the way, Mr. Benny, our hot water heater is leaking. Do you think maybe you could have it fixed? Well, see, plumbing costs are awfully high now. I guess they are, but it's been months since you promised to paint the living room. Well... uh... I fixed the hole in the roof myself. Oh, good, good. Well, I guess I'll be running along. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Oh, oh, by the way, Mr. Brown, how's your wife? I mean, what's she doing now? Oh, haven't you heard? She writes that radio program, The Mean Old Man. (laughs) Oh, oh, yes, I listen to it every day. Your wife has quite an imagination. Yeah, yeah, imagination. (laughs) Huh? Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Who was it, boss? Uh, Mr. Brown from Long Beach. Oh, you know, he's been complaining a long time about a hole in the roof. It's fixed, it's fixed. But, boss, I don't remember you sending anyone down to fix it. If I say it's fixed, it's fixed. If you don't believe me, listen to tomorrow's episode and you'll find out. (laughs) By the way, Rochester, has my television script arrived from CBS? No, not yet, boss. I don't know what's holding it up. I got so much memorizing to do. Now, that must be it now. Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, it's you, Dennis. Come on in. Thank you. How do you feel, kid? Oh, fine, thanks. How are your folks? They're fine, too. That's good. Especially my father. After six months, they finally took the cast off his foot. In a cast for six months? Uh Uh-huh. Dennis, what was wrong with your father's foot? Oh, nothing. He stepped in a bucket of cement. For heaven's sake. Look, kid, I can understand your father stepping in a bucket of cement. I can almost understand him standing there and letting the cement dry. But why? I mean, why would he keep it on his foot for six months? Well, my mother made him. What? When he stayed out late at night, he couldn't tiptoe into the house. (laughs) That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Imagine your mother making him keep his foot in a bucket for six months. Oh, two weeks ago, it came in handy. How? They were invited to a masquerade and Papa went as a potted palm. (laughs) Look, kid, do me a favor, will you? What? As long as you've got your mouth open, sing, don't talk. Okay. Manischewitz is one. friend 
and stole my sweetheart from me. I remember the night and the Tennessee walls. Now I know just how much I have lost. Yes, I lost my little darling. That was really very good. Gee, thank you. You know, I can't understand you, kid. You come in here and talk, and when you talk, you sound so ridiculous. And then you sing. And when you sing, you're a completely different person. Gee, I mean, what are you, a, a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Uh-huh, and each one has its own show. <laughs> What? The doctor's on another network. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, so long, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, kid. Oh, say, Mr. Benny. Now what? Can I have your permission to do a guest spot tomorrow on a dramatic program? Dramatic program? What's the name of it? The Mean Old Man. <laughs> hmm. They got a wonderful part for me where I fix a hole in the roof. Do it, do it. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss. Are you sure my television script hasn't arrived yet? Not yet. Well, I'm going to call CBS and see what's holding it up. It happens all the time. You got to rehearse it. You got to memorize it. CBS, the star's address. What? All right, all right. You don't have to shout. The line is busy now. Hold on. Who is it, Guy Truth? Jack Benny. Oh. Well, what does Tennessee Schmaltz want now? <laughs> he wants I should get him the mimeograph department. So, why were you so fresh to him? Why was I so fresh to him? The other night he called and asked me if he could pick me up and take me dancing at the Macombo. And then he got mad because when he called for me, I was wearing my overalls. Well, I don't blame him for being mad. Why would you wear overalls to the Macombo? Who gets to the Macombo? I always wind up fixing his car. <laughs> well, you're better off than I am. Why? I'm not mechanical-minded, and I have to get out and push. <laughs> oh, have you been out with Jack lately? Yeah, two weeks ago. He took me to a nightclub. We sat at a corner, and the lights were low, and he got so romantic. <laughs> what did he do? He drank Hadakol out of my slipper. <laughs> See, that's funny. He usually drinks Manischewitz's wine. <laughs> Open. 
in town. <laughs> well, with the hat of call, you must have had the happiest feet in town. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I've been thinking? Uh, maybe we shouldn't be so fussy about men. I guess you're right. After all, we're not getting any younger. Speak for yourself, John. I'm only 23. <laughs> 23? Then how did you get that medal for sticking to your switchboard during the San Francisco fire? <laughs> it wasn't me. Well, I never... I mean... Oh, why should I lie? You were there. <laughs> Benny, the line is still busy. Your television script? I'll tell him goodbye. That'll win me a draft. <laughs> Let me a draft apartment drives me nuts. That script should have been here. Hey, maybe that's it. Come in. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Don. Don, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Now, Don, don't try to kid me. There's something bothering you. What is it? Oh, it's the sportsman quartet. They're mad at me. The four of them? Yeah, they're outside, and they won't come in because I'm here. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> come on in, fellas. Hello, boys. Hmm. Hello, boys. <laughs> See, they won't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. And they have such a wonderful idea for next week's commercial. Haven't you, boys? <laughs> Have you? <laughs> now, this is the silliest thing I've ever heard. Now, Don, why are they mad at you? They found out that you pay me more money than you pay them. <laughs> well, that's a fine thing to be mad about. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I think they've got a point there. But, Don, you should get more money than the quartet. You've been with me 17 years. But, Jack, sentiment shouldn't enter into this. After all, there are four of them. But, Don, every year you've been picked as radio's outstanding announcer. I know, Jack, but now let's be fair about it. They work hard, too, and I believe that they should get the same salary I get. Don, if you feel that strongly about it, there should be an adjustment. I mean, how much am I paying the quartet now? A hundred dollars a week. Oh. Well, Don, if it'll make you feel better starting next week, I'll cut you down to the same. <laughs> Okay. Well, thanks, Jack. That solves the whole thing. Now there won't be any more trouble. <laughs> it's amazing that I didn't think of that myself. <laughs> well, Don, now that it's all settled, what's this song the boys have? Well, Jack, you know, in the past few weeks, everybody seems to be catching cold. So they're a little worried about you, and uh, they want you to take care of yourself. Oh, isn't that sweet? Let's hear it, fellas. <laughs> is free. Take good care of yourself. Careful, Mr. B. Eat an apple every day. Go to bed by three. Take good care of yourself. Pass an NBC. Be careful in the breeze. Ooh. Watch it, please. Ooh. Or you'll sneeze. Ooh. Don't get the flu and ruin your program. If you're ever feeling bad, call a doctor, do. We all love you When you're buying cigarettes Buy the brand you like Take good care of yourself Smoke a lucky strike When you're driving in a car Or you're on a hike Take good care of yourself Smoke a lucky strike There'll be no puff that's rough Ooh, sure enough Ooh no man of Eschevitz is wine. <laughs> Why not be happy and go lucky for that rich tobacco taste? Smoke the best you see. Round, firm, fully packed, Dallas MFT. was very good, fellas, and I hope you're not mad at Don anymore. Oh, I'm sure they're not, Jack, and thanks again for making that adjustment. You're welcome, Don. I'm sure you won't have any more trouble. Goodbye. So long, Jack. I'm so happy. <laughs> be my love. Be my love. 
Well, I saved a little money by cutting down salary. But I lost a little, too. After all, I'm his agent. <laughs> oh, well. Now, let's see. Well, here I am, boss. Rochester, how'd you know I was gonna call you? You ain't gonna get any funny answers out of that bridge lamp. <laughs> oh, yes. How's my scrapbook coming along? It's all finished, boss. I put a title on the cover. A title on my scrapbook? What do you call it? Across the River and Into the Bank. <laughs> Say, that's pretty good. Yeah, the bridge lamp never would have thought of that. I know, I know. <laughs> now, put away the paste and I'll get it. Be my love. Well, the boys from the Beverly Hills Beavers, Joey, Stevie, and Butch, and, and... This is Butch's mother. Oh, hello, Mrs. Broderick. Won't you come in? Thank you. I hope we're not intruding, Mr. Benny, but the boys insisted I come here. You see, Butch idolizes you so much, and... And, and what, Mrs. Broderick? Uh, it's like this, Mr. Benny. Butch has a tooth with a cavity in it. It's got to be pulled, and he's afraid to go to the dentist. Is that right, Butch? My tooth don't hurt. <laughs> Mr. Benny, I'm sure if you told him to go, he would. You see, you're his hero. I am? <laughs> yes, in fact, I'm kind of thrilled myself. Talking to the man who used to play football under the name of Red Grange. <laughs> well... Tell her about the time you caught your own kickoff and made a touchdown. Oh, oh it was nothing, Stevie. Butch, let me look at your tooth. Now open your mouth. Mm -mm. Now come on now, Butch, come on, open your mouth. Mm -mm. Now, Butch, that's no way to act. You yourself said when you grow up, you want to be just like Mr. Benny. Yeah, if you're brave and have your tooth pulled, maybe someday you too will be on the Harvard rowing team. <laughs> Butch, uh, let me see your tooth. Oh, Mr. Benny, were you on the Harvard rowing team? Butch, Butch, let me see your tooth. <laughs> Mr. Benny, tell Butch's mother about the day you won the rowing got all by yourself. Butch, Butch, let me look at your tooth. <laughs> Mr. Benny not only won the rowing regatta, but he knocked a home run at the Yankee Stadium at the same time. <laughs> Butch, please let me look at your tooth, will you? Mr. Benny, how could you be rowing and still hit a home run in the Yankee Stadium? Well, uh, uh... He had a long arc. <laughs> Yes, it was one of the... Rochester, what are you doing here? Making notes. I'm starting a new scrapbook. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, Mr. Benny, would you mind coming down to the dentist's office with us? It's just around the corner. Dr. Kearns. Oh, oh, Dr. Kearns, yes. That's the only way I'll get Butch in the dentist's chair. Well, I'll be glad to go along. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Broderick, how much do you expect to pay to have Butch's tooth pulled? <laughs> Oh, I'd say about five dollars. Five dollars. Oh, Rochester. No, no, boss, the pliers are rusty. <laughs> I didn't call you for that. I just wanted to tell you I'm taking Butch to the dentist. Now, come on, Butch. My tooth don't hurt. Now, come, come, on, on, come, come on, on, come on, come on. Well, here's Dr. Kern's office. Let's go in. Come, children. Yes? I'm Mrs. Broderick. I called a while ago. Oh, yes, yes. Which one is to have his tooth pulled? The one playing with the yo-yo or the one with the propeller on his hat? The one with the yo-yo. The one with the propeller is Mr. Benny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Mrs. Broderick, the doctor will be with you in a moment. Thank you. Now, look, Butch. Butch, after you get your tooth pulled, you should see your dentist twice a year and brush your teeth twice a day. Remember that, Butch, and you'll never have any more trouble. Hey, Butch, be sure the dentist gives you some of that stuff Mr. Benny invented, that penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I don't want to get my tooth pulled. Look, Butch, there's really nothing to it. Having a tooth pulled is a very simple... Next, thing. please. You may take him in now, Mrs. Broderick. Come, Butch. I don't want to have my tooth pulled. It don't hurt. I don't want it pulled. Now, now wait a minute, Butch. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, 
May I talk to you, Doctor? Why, certainly. Now, look, Doc, I want to show Butch that having a tooth pulled doesn't hurt at all. Well, it really doesn't. I know, but we've got to convince Butch. So I'll sit in the chair, you make believe that you're pulling my tooth, and I'll make a big nothing out of it. <laughs> now, That's an excellent idea. All right, come sit right down in the dentist chair. Now, look, Butch, I'm going to have my tooth pulled. Isn't that right, Doctor? Yes. Come, Mr. Benny, open your mouth. Watch this, Butch. Ah. See, Butch? Nothing to it. Uh, would you please open your mouth again, Mr. Benny? <laughs> huh? Open your mouth. Ah. Mmm. <laughs> what is it, Doctor? What is it? What is it? Oh, oh nurse. Yes, Doctor? Prepare the Novocaine. What? A third tooth from the end, the bicuspid, it has to come out. But I don't want to get my tooth pulled. It doesn't hurt. Honest doctor doesn't hurt. I don't want to get my tooth pulled. Go ahead, doc. I'm holding them. Look. Look, let me go. Here's the Novocaine, doctor. Thank you, nurse. Doctor, you can't do this to me. <laughs> there. There, it's out. Oh, boy. Look at that propeller spin. <laughs> Ooh. Now, Butch, let me look at your tooth. Come on, open your mouth. I don't want it. Come on, Butch, open your mouth. No. Open that big mouth or I'll bash your head in. <laughs> okay. Uh... Hmm. There's nothing wrong with your tooth, Sonny. Oh, but, Doctor, look how black it is. He's been eating licorice. What? <laughs> and, Mr. Benny, for pulling your tooth, that will be $5. You can deduct it from next month's rent. Come on, kids, let's get out of here. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment. And now, let's listen as our happy-go-lucky singers salute the month of March. The winds of March may blow real hard, the weather may be wild. But what care I, I've lucky strike the smoke that's smooth and mild. And luckies taste better than any other cigarette. In rain or shine or snow this month, keep happy as can be. For better taste, smoke lucky strike, cause LSMFT. Count on it. Luckies taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Yes, be happy, go lucky, because luckies taste better than any other cigarette. Now that is a fact. For fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you that perfect combination of real mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. So if for any reason you are not completely happy with your present cigarette, if it's too mild or too strong, switch to Lucky Strike for complete smoking enjoyment. You'll get mildness, smoothness, and taste all in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. So be happy, go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Ooh, ooh. Rochester, get me another ice bag. Yes, sir. And get me two more aspirins. Yes, sir. Ooh. You know, boss, for a man who scored a touchdown with his own kickoff, you're making an awful fuss. <laughs> Never mind that. Get me the ice bag. Okay, Red. <laughs> hmm. Good night, Dow. <laughs> Service. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.